Hello everyone, welcome back. Now in this video tutorial, let's uh, face over a new sensor that is ADC1216. Uh, it's a very common sensor used in its, um, electronics as you can see. Uh, for, to gain more knowledge about this sensor, let's have a look over website controleverything.com and here we have to search on for this particular sensor. And let's see what we got here in this particular sensor. And as you can see, uh, there is a long list of sensors being used. Uh, let's pick up the basic one as you can see ADC 1 to 1. It's a one channel uh, analog to digital converter sensor. Uh, these are some more prominent features which you are able to see on this particular screen. And also you can purchase this sensor from here. Now for the interfacing section uh, which we will cover up later in this video, I will be taking care of the sensor ADC 1 to 1C with a particle photon and a code is required. That's a particle code and to get that code, let's go to resource tab and here comes the particle code sample. Now you can download the particle code sample as a zip file from here, right from here and you can have the code from github.com. That's the second way and the repository there is control everything community. Now what do we require is to have a look over some hardware connections we need to set up. Let's have it. Well, coming to the hardware connection setup part, uh, the first thing we require which you are able to see on my screen is a particle photon. Now this here is an I2C sheet. It's available and can be purchased from the website controleverything.com and the reason we are using this shield is to make connections easier with other I2C devices. So for that what we require is to gently place this particle photon over the I2C shield and make a connection just like that. Now to power up this particle photon what do we require is a micro USB cable which you can see on my screen and gently insert it over this power jack. Now what do we require next is our sensor that is ADC121C and this here is a connecting cable. Now make sure that while making the connection we have to make the connection of the ground terminal of the sensor to the ground wire of the cable and similarly for the I2C shield the same rule has to be applied. So we are done with all the connections. Now what do we require next is to have a look over the code. Now for the interfacing section, first of all we have to log in to github.com and then we have to check for the repository that is control everything community. And let's see what we got here and this here is the sensor ADC 121C021. As you can see it's the particle code we are looking forward to explain but before that let's have a look over the instructions part which says that we have to log into a particle photon and the setup uh, are provided on this very link which I will open up right in front of you for a better view. Now let's see we have some instructions commands which you have to carefully follow for the installation and setup. After that we have to download the code and we have to copy the code on the online ID and this build.particle will help us to build or create a new file a new code and we have to save it. After that the last part is to verify and flash the code on the particle photon and the code output will be displayed in the form of logs at the dashboard. And dashboard.particle.io user logs is the link where we will have our relevant information. So please do it carefully and then we have to get back to the code, the particle code and you notice it's a .ino extension file. Now in the code as you can see we have included application.hn spark wiring i2c.hn files and we have defined the address of the sensor that is 0x50. We have created an integer which you see as initialized as raw ADC equal to 0 and in the void setup function we have set some variables and we have initialized i2c communication as master initialized serial communication with the baud rate equal to 9600. Now in the void loop function as you can see we have uh, to check for the data register from where we are going to get the data it's calling conversion result register 0x00 then we are requesting and reading two bytes of the data from this very register that is the raw ADC MSP and raw ADC LSP after that we have the conversion of the data into 12 bits which you can see according to the guidelines for the data sheet ADC 121C at the very end of our code we have the output to be displayed onto the dashboard as you can see in the form of digital value of analog input which exactly is the raw value. So this is how the code looks like. Now let's see how it works. Now let's have a look over the working part and for that we have to copy this entire code of the particle language and then we have to open up the build terminal we have discussed earlier in the instructions part and here we have to create a new file 
with the name as you can see on my screen. Uh, it's ADC 121C0021 and then we have to paste the entire code we have just copied and then save it and then we have to verify and compile the code. It's verified, great work and after that we have to flash the code. While flashing the code we have to check for the magenta flash which will confirm that code is good to go and just now as you can see we have the successful notification of the flash. It's good. Now we have to open up the dashboard terminal user logs and we can have our output onto the screen just in front of you. And as you can see we have the digital value of analog input. It's coming zero which means there is nothing connected uh, among the terminals of the sensor but instead when I try to connect a battery of double A battery of 1.5 volt, the digital value of analog input stands by 790. It's raw value and it's almost constant because the cell, the battery is connected right now among the terminals and it's coming constant, really constant. So, this means the sensor works in this way. Now, what do we require next is to have a look over the applications and the benefits. The ADC 121C and the family of ADC 121C021 is a converter that is low power monolithic 12 bit analog to digital converter that operates from a 2 point plus 2.7 to 5.5 volt supply. The converter is based upon a successive approximation register architecture with an internal track and hold circuit that can handle input frequencies up to 11 megahertz. The device features an I2C compatible serial interface that operates in all three speed modes including high speed mode 3.4 MHz. Due to these good features, it is applicable in a lot of applications like system monitoring, peak detection, portable instruments, medical instruments, test equipment, automotive and a lot more to mention. Well, you can have this sensor and you can purchase it from controleverything.com and you can get the code from resource tab from this site. You can download the code as required. Also, you can get the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community. In the end, I would like to make it clear that if you have any doubt regarding any part of this sensor or video, you can have your queries on controleverything.com and you can post your comments on the community page on this website. For articles and blogs, you can have a look over on instructables.com and to subscribe more video tutorials like this, you can have a look over our YouTube channel. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this video and had a good one yourself. Thanks a lot for watching.